up guys Matt with Chrome Donkey here back for another video uh, hey listen it's been a minute since I've recorded a video for YouTube but I wanted to give you guys an update on a couple things I've done to the gladiator recently um, so to start uh, basically I have been waiting on a road armor rack for God knows how long probably like 12 weeks they were really far delayed and behind uh, really with their uh, their fabrication side of it apparently the the metal I guess the metal or the steel distributor that they use was really hit by COVID. So basically they were just, you know, at their mercy waiting on them to deliver the components. And uh, long story short, I finally got the road armor rack. I've got it installed. I've got it at full height. Um, and, it, you know, I love it. it. It looks really good on the Jeep. I had the, uh, the trim pieces powder coated red to kind of match the Jeep and to shine through the logo area on the rack and I think that looks really good I'll show you guys some pics here in a minute uh, but you know it's an adjustable rack so I could have gone half height I could have gone full height and the reason that I decided to go full height is I've got an eye camper sky camp 2.0 on it right now so this was one that you know when I really started looking around at the camping scene and as far as what I wanted my setup to look like and you know which tent I wanted to go with and all that good stuff there for a minute I was thinking I was gonna do the uh, Overland trailer and I was gonna set up one of those military uh, M 100s and that just didn't pan out uh, really the long story short there is it just started getting way too expensive for a 60 year old trailer you know I would have had to have dumped a lot of money into to make it highway worthy you know and trail worthy and I mean, sure, you can do it, but at the end of the day, it's a 60 year old trailer. So I would basically be rebuilding it. So I kind of punted on that project and thought if I was going to do that over again, I would just look at, you know, one of those pre built, ready to go overland trailers. Or, you know, there's a lot of these guys that can actually build them from scratch. They literally build and construct the frame and then build the tub, whatever type of tub you want on it. So anyway, I decided to punt on the whole idea of a trailer. And instead, you know, I decided to go the rack route. Love the Road Armor rack, got a 50% off discount on it, so that was nice. And um, got that on there, got the, uh, the Sky Camp 2.0 up there, and that's a used one. I certainly wasn't gonna pay full price for an eye camper. Um, you know, I feel like they are the cream of the crop when it comes to rooftop tents, but you're gonna pay for it. It's just kind of like Apple is with computers go get a laptop at Best Buy for 300 bucks but if you want a MacBook Pro you're not getting it for $300 so it's kind of the same concept and both will get you to the internet right so both tents you know a cheap one you can get a ground tent for 100 bucks or you know the nice high-end rooftop tent you're still gonna be camping somewhere out in the woods so I, would, I didn't want to use a uh, or I didn't want to pay for a new one but I definitely wanted to find a good used one because the eye camper is just awesome I mean it's so easy to set up literally takes you just a couple minutes and it's it's up or it's down um, it's plenty of room in there too so the sky camp 2.0 is actually uh, you get like a king size equivalent to a sleeping area which is awesome you know I'm a big guy and certainly if I want to take you know my wife and kids we need a little bit extra room in there so it works out great um, the used one that I found was actually a white one I'll show you guys some pics of me picking it up I actually had to drive a a piece to get it it was about a five hour one-way trip but at the end of the day it was worth it because I saved about probably two thousand dollars you know what it would be for a new one so definitely worth doing and um, got it and I didn't want to leave it white obviously I got a red you know gladiator so I used the Raptor liner the u-pole Raptor liner kit I'll put a link in the description of that this is the second time I've used that stuff and it's been phenomenal both times super easy to apply you don't, I mean, yes, you have to do some prep, but it's not as important as it, is, as it is with typical paint. So for example, if you don't prep a surface right with paint, a lot of times you'll see the imperfections come through in the paint. Like if you have a, you know, indention, if you've got some rough areas, rough patches, well, with this stuff, it's gonna cover all that. So as long as you have a nice scuffed up surface, you know, this stuff is easy. You can get it where it actually comes with a gun hook it right up to your air compressor and boom just spray away so i use that i dyed it red so i've got a red raptor lined eye camper now on top of the truck and you know i love it i'm gonna do a review on it separately this is more of just like an update video 
And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys before I make it home is my rear view mirror setup. Because once I put the road armor rack, the rooftop tent, I also ordered the road armor suspended spare tire relocation bracket, which basically allows you to take the factory hoist, the factory lift for your spare tire that's normally under the bed, relocate it and suspend it from the top of the rack pretty darn innovative and it works great so I've got my 39 inch spare up there now and you can probably see it in the background of this video and you can't see anything you know out the back now so what I want to do is I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna cut to another clip with a forward-facing camera and I'm gonna show you guys this mirror all right guys back with you now so this is the mirror so I'm gonna do my best to hold the phone hopefully this is in the shot and not too bouncy but Essentially what this is, is a poor Mido is the name of it. You can probably see that. They got their little logo on the right under the clock. But it is a digital rear view camera and it doubles as a dash cam because if you look up on the dash, that's actually their front facing cam that attaches to the front of the windshield. And you know, I've got my CB of course, and then here's the mirror. Now what's awesome about this is because it doubles as a dash cam, you've got constant recording of everything that's going on in front of you and behind you. And this particular company also sells a hardwire kit. And if you get the hardwire kit, like it says, you wire it straight up to the battery. You don't have to worry about cigarette lighters and all that mess. But the other thing that it does is it monitors your battery's voltage. And if your battery drops below a certain you know, voltage level, it will automatically cut off the recording and the recording that I'm talking about is when you turn the vehicle off, you can put it into an automatic time-lapse mode. So basically the way I have it set up is every time I turn the vehicle off, it will start doing a time-lapse recording and get about five frames per second continuously, you know, up to 12 or 24 hours until the vehicle's turned back on. And then in that interim, if for whatever reason your battery was low, if there was something else draining it, and it detected a low you know, voltage level, that system would automatically cut off the time lapse. So it's a you know, really cool setup, and it's a, I think it's a 12 inch camera system. I'm gonna link to the whole thing in the description, and as you can see, I'm pulling back in. So just wanted to, to finish this up real quick with you guys, because I wanna show you a couple things, and it's probably a little bit safer to do now that I'm not driving. But, so one of the reasons I went with this one versus the, I think it's called Total View or Full View or whatever the other fancy version is that actually replaces your OEM mirror. This one just attaches to the outer side. And, you know, basically it comes with some little bungees that just connect up here and then loop back down here. You can see the little hooks right here. And for me, this was the setup hindsight that I'm glad I went with because one of the problems with that full view or total view, whatever it's called, is yes, it replaces your OEM mirror, but it has the front facing cam built into the back of the mirror, which upon first glance, you might be like, damn, that's clean. The problem for me though, and maybe not for you guys, but for me, there's a lot of stuff like right behind my factory mirror. So I have my President Bill CB mounted right here. You know, I've got some wires. This also comes with a GPS module. So the GPS module allows you to not only track your speed, but it tracks your GPS location. So if you were ever involved in an accident, whatnot, you've got some sort of uh, coordinate details. But I'm glad I didn't get the one with the built-in camera because I feel like I would be limited and I'd have a lot of obstructions. So this one, you literally just stick it wherever you want on the dash and it plugs in. And to give you an example, you can switch between them just by pressing this button right here. So there's the front facing camera. Now what's neat about this is you can scroll up and down to like change your view. And you can see that I typically leave it barely with the hood, you know, at the very bottom, just a tiny bit. And that's the view that I prefer. You can change the brightness level, you know, if you really wanna crank it up and crank it down. And then you also have the split view. Now, I'm not a fan of the split view because for some reason when you do this, although the front, you get like the full cam, this one over here is like half of the cam or it's kind of like off at an angle, like a weird angle. So I never personally use this view. I always use the rear view. Now, what's nice about that though is the front camera 
as well as the rear camera, as you can tell there, is always recording. So what's cool about that, especially for future trail videos, I'll have a front facing camera recording every square inch of any adventure I go on. So I'll be able to leverage that footage in some of my future videos. So yeah, so not much else to say about it. You know, the wires plug in here at the top. You can see what the uh, memory card slot is right there. And you know, I just have these wires kind of tucked up and then hidden right here going all the way back. You can see a little bulge right there just slightly because there's so much stuff tucked up there. But that's it, you know, and I hardwired it in and I'll show you when I turn the vehicle off. For example, I'll turn the Jeep off, you'll see it. Sorry, I'm having Siri trying to jump in on me. And when I open the vehicle, so it like does its shutdown sequence, you'll see it. See, it says, we'll enter time lapse. And for me, that's awesome because the mirror itself will shut down, you know, it powers off, but yet it's still recording front and rear. And, you know, guys, that's, to me, that's awesome. So if you're looking for a mod, and let me, before I cut this video short, let me get out with you. And I'm gonna show you where I mounted this camera. So right here is where the camera's mounted. You can see it's kind of dirty right now, but you know, that's where the camera's mounted, right on the rack and you run the wire and I went straight down and you know, it comes out underneath the bed of the truck and I just zip tied it all the way to the front. And here's a sneak peek of the full setup, right? So I think it turned out really nice. You got the road armor, you got the, all the trim pieces, powder coated red to match. Got the eye camper up there, even blacked out the K since it was kind of clashing with the, the red that it wound up being. And you know, the profile view, that's a big ass tent, right? What do you say about it? You know, I could technically scoot it forward so it lines up with the rear of the rack and goes further over the top, but I feel like that would make the weight, you know, offset a little bit because it's already a little bit more forward than it is rear, but I also didn't want it to hang out too far past the rear of the truck. So. If I ever dropped off any type of crazy ledge or anything, I didn't want it hanging out like a, you know another foot out back. So I think it's in about the best position it can be in. The only thing I'll say about it is if I were to do it over again, it's just, it's all dependent on how you do your camping, right? If, if I wanna take anybody with me, this is the tent to have. If it's only gonna be me solo, one of the things I might consider is dropping the rack into the half height position and getting the iCamper Mini, which is designed to literally fit from below the roof line, or basically the tent itself would be even at the roof line and go all the way to the bed of the truck. So it's certainly a much smaller tent, but the idea is it could be completely contained in the bed of the truck without protruding beyond the roof line of the vehicle. So that would help with a lot of stuff, you know, aerodynamics and any type of wind shear you might get on the highway and obviously on the trail with any type of obstacles. So, but so far so good. I love it. You know, I think it turned out really nice and, um, you know, I like the overall setup. The other thing before I let you go that I did a little upgrade on is you can see I may or may not have upgraded my shocks and also my springs probably can't tell much on the springs, but the other thing that I will say is gives you a better view of the spring. So I went with the Evo uh, plush ride spring as well as the Falcon 33s. The problem with the Skyjacker kit, which is what I had on it, is when I added all this extra weight, it was very, very apparent. Um, almost to the point of it would cause a bounce. You know, and it's probably just because all the extra weight that's added up there, those springs just weren't cut out for it. Uh, so, I got the Evo Springs, I got the Falcon 33s, got them dialed in, and it rides as, as good as it's gonna ride, you know, with this extra weight up there. And uh, let's see, what else? The only other thing I'll give you guys a sneak peek on, and I'll do another review on this. I got some Gatekeeper off-road pod mount LED lights right there with some uh, KC Flex. Really love that, had those powder coated red and, you know, painted the logos black. So I, I think that really kinda, you know, stands out pretty good. And uh, that's really cool because when you turn the wheel, your light angles go with the wheel. So guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've done a video. I got to get more of these going in the future. And uh, I'll do some more in-depth reviews on each of these components later. But for now, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure if you like this content, subscribe to the channel. We're trying to grow it. You know, my, my small, you know, not too distant goal is to hit 5,000 followers. So you know, please make sure you subscribe if you like this kind of content. There's going to be more to come. 
And if you like this video, hit the like and notification bell to make sure you're notified when I push new videos. And I promise it'll be more frequent than it has been here lately. Uh, until then, stay safe and stay healthy, and we'll see you on the next one.